to the shop actually we're between houses today because we've uh, we got just a, something a little bit different today we're just going to be cleaning of a bike I was commissioned by East Side Bike Shop to uh, take care of an older bike and here she is and this one is a August of 1969 almost looks like a 10 speed it's actually a 3 speed Follow that down to a three-speed rear end. We have a Schwinn Racer. And we're just going to take it down. We're going to wash it up a little bit. We're going to see what we got underneath all the gook and grime. I don't think it's going to be that bad. I don't see many bad parts on the paint. We have a little bit of a mess up there. No big deal. A little there. We're going to clean these cables up. Make it look new. We'll work on those uh, fender braces. We'll get going. Let me fill my bucket up with some nice soapy water and we'll see you in a bit. We got it soaked down we're about ready to rinse it down too there's a couple reasons I wanted to do this little part here is you probably saw me wiping down this area quite a bit because these old Schwinn decals they end up with a ring or a hazy a hazy part on there and actually my little bucket of soap and water got rid of that haze and that'll further go away when I when I start to put the wax on here this I wasn't worried about that silk screen down there like a paint that'll come out like new the other thing I, I should have stopped right when I saw it because I didn't realize this those grips I don't think I've ever really seen grips with that gold sparkle in there that's pretty cool we're gonna wax those as well and those will really pop out so they'll get cleaned all right time to rinse her off and then we'll bring her in the garage which is a little cooler today and we'll start taking the wheels off we'll detail those and while they're off we can get a little bit more under the forks of course I didn't wash the forks that I'll do that right now before I rinse it anyways we'll see you on the inside <laughs> all right we got it kind of cleaned up and yeah you can see all the rust over on this spots here and the paint we got all that crap off of there because you don't want to polish on dirt so you just hose it down wait for it to dry a little bit we're gonna take these wheels off of here so we can get on the inside of these bars or these tubes the first thing to do is take apart the three speed and that's right here that's really simple you just take this adjusting tube and there's a lock nut on there I'm going to keep that lock nut in its place and just twist this off and we'll leave this just hanging like that over here get our old 15 inch wrench 15 millimeter excuse me well, these don't, nuts don't have to come off all the way but you do have to loosen them quite a bit because the frame will spring out just a little bit How easy was that? We'll grab that wheel in one second. We don't have to remove the chain, but it sure does make things a lot easier. 
if I can get you in a little closer, <laughs> hopefully you can see. On these old Schwinn's, they had a master, master link. And that's the one that doesn't have the little curves on the inside of the chain. It's just straight over, and I don't think you can see it. And all you do is take your thumbs, push them in, and that should pop right off. And there you go. That's a little part that comes off. That's the outside plate. And the links come apart. The chain should come right out of there. Of course, I got it jammed in here anyways. That's the next step is to get this chain on. All right, front wheel. Get that one off of there. This one takes a 14 millimeter. These have to come all the way off. The nuts have to come all the way off so the fender braces will spread apart. There you go. Nice dirty fingers. Yeah. Alright, I flipped the bike upside down. What we're going to do is take the chain guard off because I want to take the whole crank assembly out of there because uh, it's just a little bit rough in these areas here. It would be too much to try to clean and the chrome is, is gone. Especially on this area right here. So we are going to replace it. We have a new one. Or a semi-new one. We're just going to polish that one up and put that on the bike and replace the pedal. Not replacing the pedals, those are called, as, a, as some of the bike enthusiasts call them, waffle pedals. They're perfect for the bike. So let's get that chain guard off of there. I've already squirted, squirted just a little bit of WD-40 to make this just that much easier. Didn't need it, as I found out. Always put your screws and everything off to the side where you can find them. There we go. That looks pretty clean under there. I mean, there's a stuff that we can get out of there, but it's easier to clean off the bike, so. First thing to do on uh, when you're removing that crank is I'm sure you've seen too many videos or you just already know you got to get the left pedal off. The left pedal is left-handed thread, and I just go like this. There we go. Let's start working on this. Now this is also left-handed thread. Take the nut off, take the washer off. With a little key and right at the bottom. There's a groove on the top side of this arm that that key goes into. Everybody should know that. I'm going to put these down on the bench and be right back. If I had this the other way, you could see what I'm doing, but there's two slots in this cone. cone ring and it's also left-handed 
So I just like to work that off with my with my fingers. And luckily this one isn't all too grimed up too bad that you can't just get it off with your fingers. There we go. Now there's a little trick. You gotta pull out and push the bearing out so it falls down. And there you go. And this one should follow suit. There you go. Ah, oh, they're a little greasy and grimy. We'll put them in some WD-40 and clean them up. And then we'll get ready to take this crank off of here and get ready to change the crank. I'm sorry, I didn't mean crank. The chain ring. We'll work on polishing that up while it's off the bike. That's a whole lot easier. You don't have to take it off, but if you want to get in nice and tight and get it all nice and perfect, it'll work. See, it looks gold. Just like I showed you in some of my other videos, on camera, this stuff looks gold. It's just rust. No big deal, a little bit of rust. Alright, this part I'm going to show you how to take the, uh, the kickstand off. The Schwinn kickstand, they need a uh, special tool. Uh, some guys have tried to figure out how to do this with a, with a wrench, a close-in wrench, but when you have access to one of these, which is a KS1 Park Tool Schwinn kickstand removal tool, these two little nibs right here fit on either side of this side of the thing. And the, it's easier to work on these while they're upside down. Because this is what you have to do. You have to remove that pin and that kickstand will come out. So get yourself a little leverage. It's not going to spring out. Alright, being a little stubborn. We'll grab something we can get a hold of that pin and work it out. And there's that little pin. Now that kickstand should slide right out of there. There you go. We'll clean that up and uh, while it's apart, we'll be able to clean inside of the, the housing for it. We'll be able to polish up the kickstand as well. I'm going to get after these cables. Clean them up. I like to use a little something with uh, bleach in it. Bleach and steel wool. Ah, oh, the Schwinn guys are going, ah! Yes, steel wool on the cables. Spray it on this. Don't spray it near the bike. You'll have spots on your bike. I like to wipe it on a little bit so it can soak in for a while. We'll let that set for a couple seconds. I got one right back here. <laughs> also, there's a uh, cable runs down here for the shifter. I'm going to hit that as well. It's got plastic coating on it. Echo. Now we can come back and work on these. Doesn't take long for that bleach to take effect. While you're using the bleach and the steel wool together, it's getting right down into that plastic 
casing and bring it back to the color it should be. This is not very heavy steel wool, it's like a medium zero 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 whatever it is. We just take a dry rag after that and wipe it off. If you could really see the difference on this, you would uh, not be amazed, but you'd be, oh, that works. And that's that. Alright, time to get the seat off. This takes a uh, standard 14 millimeter on both the seat bracket itself and the seat post clamp. Usually on the older ones, I don't know, I'll show it to you when I get it off. There's only one bolt, I mean one nut on one side. It has just a round, just a round end of the bolt, and one bolt on this side. I'm not going to worry about cleaning this up too too much. I might clean the underside of the seat just because it's off. Same wrench. reason why I held that I don't want that to drop down in there that drops down in you're lost now what do we have a problem with this Let's spread it out a little bit with a big screwdriver All right, let me show you a little trick on how to clean these. Uh, this is not actually a, uh, I don't believe it's aluminum, some kind of a, a steel, steel alloy. But we can clean that up really nice and it'll look like it should look. Look, there's a little S. See you in a minute. All right, this is how I go about cleaning these uh, steel anodized, whatever they are. The seat post clamp. We're just going to run them on the old steel wheel on a bench grinder. It might be a little loud, but I'm sure you can handle it. Start off with a little, a little nut. I'll show you the difference after I'm done.
I like to use the side of the wheel for this instead of straight on. It's a little less abrasive, if you can believe that. different and get up pretty good Get a less bolt of course you can hit this with a little a little bit of uh, just old car wax or something and polish it up a little bit there we go Okay, that, that took it down a little bit better. I think that looks better. Now we'll go back with this heavy gauge and go up and down. If I had a lathe that this would fit in, it would be way better. Because then all the lines would be going around this way. And it would get a better polish on it. Now I'll switch over to some finer steel wool. I'm mainly concerned with this section here because when this is on the bike that's the part you'll see this is already cleaned enough and that'll be up under the, the seat bracket itself you can wipe this off and then we can wax this down and protect the metal it looks better to me it's almost time to go back on the bike all right here's my clean uh, seat post and seat clamp we're just going to put that back on the bike we'll grab the seat reinstall that this might need a little influence ready for some wax. We'll get that seat and put that on there and you'll see that in a little bit. Alright we got a little bit of work done on the uh, defender braces here. We've cleaned those up. I'm gonna I used a lot of WD-40 to get rid of some of not so much the rust but to, to get rid of some more of the greasy grimy stuff and that that works pretty good you wipe that off but you don't want to wax over top of WD-40 so I'm gonna take some soap and water and just spray it right on the bike kind of like a dry cleaning is what I call it but it'll get things a little wet and then we can dry it off with a, uh, a towel then we'll get on to waxing you don't need a whole lot of water soap and water it'll drag across with the rag nice clean rag and soak up some of that stuff some of the greasy stuff you want to get that off of there We got these nice big white shop towels that you can see all the crap that's coming off the bike.
Now you can see with that chain guard off of there, we can get all the way up inside before we put the wheels back on. Here's the part where uh, we find all the little dings, and little dents on the fenders, on the frame, all on the black. And uh, I like to just spot touch them up with a little bit of a little bit of black. And I like to use these little black pens. Uh, I don't like to. Some people have used uh, sharpies. Yeah, they look black at first, but when you start waxing over the top of that, they tend to look purple. This stays nice and black. And it matches the color of the paint. It's just really simple. You just have to depress the little thing there and just go. I'm just going to do that. In fact, I'm going to speed it up. started applying the wax I use a uh, just a regular pad I'm actually using the uh, super hard shell turtle wax I'm just applying that to the paint the painted sections with the pad I'm using uh, not a real thick coat but just enough liberally and I'm rubbing it in pretty decent I don't want to rub it off I want it to stay on there on the chrome bits I take a little real fine steel wool with wax on it and I go after the chrome sections and what that'll do is just take care of all the little microfine scratches and it gets rid of even the finer rust and uh, while you're doing that the wax is being embedded right into them microfine scratches I do everything this will really help polish up these brake levers Now this section on here, these clamps, they have a little ridge that goes through the center. And uh, I usually just take a, a, steel, a steel brush and get the rust out of the center of those. That's bef and then I go through and clean it up and uh, now we're at this point. We're laying in that wax. You don't have to use steel wool every single time but once you do it once you don't need to do it again but since we're detailing this bike I want it to be looking as new as possible when I'm done with it without it looking like a show bike if it ends up looking like a show bike there you go anyways I'm gonna keep working on this uh, chrome We even do the brakes. Get a little bit of wax on them. And the steel wool will leave little polish marks in it. But that's fine because they'll come out later.
There you go. Next part, we're just gonna take a nice soft t-shirt or something like that and really get after that and buff out all that uh, buff out all that wax and hopefully it'll be nice and shiny. You may not see that in the video, but you just might. All right, it's time to start putting this stuff back together here. We're gonna get the, uh, the crank and the chain ring on there. We're gonna reinstall the kickstand. We're just gonna load up with some uh, I use the old part tool grease. This has lasted me a long time because I don't go overboard with grease. I just put just enough in there. There's no need to pack all the bearings. When it's riding, or when you're riding that bike, those bearings will pack themselves. And I get a nice liberal amount in there. Go in on this side, get the same. Make sure it gets all the way to the back of the race in the, in the cup, in the bearing cup. What I do for this, I have everything in my hands. I have all the bearings, the nuts, the washers, the crank, and the chain ring all at once. Double check, make sure I'm putting it the right way. On these bearings, you have a flat side, and you have the ball side. Now these ball side always face the inside of the bike. The ball bearings go like that. So that's the first thing we're doing on this. Make sure that it's facing the inside. Same thing with this side. Left handed tread means counterclockwise. Easy enough. And here's the washer that I mentioned earlier. It has the little key. And you can see at the bottom here. And that goes straight on like that. And there's a little keyway. Which is actually at the top part of that. And it goes on like that. Now there's a little beveled side to this washer. This is the top end of that, and the flat side goes towards the washer, left-handed thread. Now right at this point right here, I could just tighten that down, but what I want to do is make sure that I have just a touch of that little play in there so it'll tighten in. And I feel it when I turn. I'm not even wrenching down on it. And I want it to spin real free without a lot of motion this way. In and out. It's pretty good. Now we're going to go after the chain guard. I mean the chain that, you know... <laughs> The kickstand. Here's your kickstand right here. Now on a Schwinn, there's a little hole right here. And that's where this little teeny pin goes. And that holds it in. Now what happens is, that pin goes into this little keyway. Sometimes it's best to have
I don't know what it's best to have. So make sure that the kickstand is laying down like that. Now there's two thicknesses on there. You have to see it. I hope you can. That wider part goes downward into that little hole. Now this special tool, what it does is it compresses that spring and all you have to do is drop the pin into that slot and make sure and wiggle it in and out. Now it's free. Once I feel that it's seated down in there, I release the, release the tool. There you go. Very simple. Just always make sure that the bigger round part on that pin goes down into the hole, into that groove, into the kickstand itself. There we go with that. I'm going to put the pedals on and we're going to work on the wheels next. All right, we're going to mount the wheels back on the uh, on the bike. What I did is uh, I, I cleaned up the rims, cleaned up the smoke, the spokes because they were pretty dirty. They had a lot of crud on them. I took a little bit of steel wool and some WD-40, the same with the rims, you know, just polished them up just a little bit. They can be waxed afterwards if I want to wax them and wipe all the, wipe all the uh, WD-40 off of them. But it got the chrome off and they don't look too bad. So we're just going to get mounted. I mounted the, uh, the tires on there, but I didn't air them up. And there's two reasons for that. I like working upside down when I mount tires so that they fall into place. They just, whoop, they fall into place. And the other reason is I don't air them up is so we can get around brakes. On the old brakes, they don't have a quick release on them. And then I just air them up afterwards and then I can check and see how well they're seated around the edge. So uh, let's just do that. This is important on these old three speeds. Now there is a, a nut on the inside here. It has, I'll try to get it up here. There's a nut on there that has 
two little tabs. You just barely see it because it has a, we'll just say it, it's a flat, two-sided flat axle. You can see the flat there. You can see the flat on the other side as well. And that has to be, you can see the little tabs on there. That has to go in the frame a certain way, otherwise the three-speed won't catch. So we're going to make sure those are lined up just right to go into that frame. Noticing something else that I'm having a problem with is I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to tighten up them bearings. So we'll bring you back when I got the wheels on there. We'll show you how to put the chain on and rehook up the uh, rehook up the back here. See you in one second. All right, I managed to get the back wheel on. Now we're gonna put the chain on. Remember, this has a, a Schwinn Master Link that locks them both together. And that will go on like there's one side, and there will be the other side, like a sword. And we have the uh, the master plate, which would go on right over the top of that. But we're not going to put that link in there just right now because we got to. Get it out of the bike. Get it where it's comfortable. Right now, I have the back wheel on a little forward. I, I'm not even worried about getting it on that back cog yet. I want to get that link on there. So you slide those two things in there. And we'll put that top cap on there. And just reverse the order how we put it. How we took it off. Just like that. I got a dog going crazy in my house. There, now we get a nice loose chain. Now we can adjust that back wheel. Pardon the dog. Gotta go pee or something, I don't know. You should be able to yank back with your fingers on this until you get some tension here. I do. I have a strip nut on that side, so we're going to have to figure something out for that. Anyways, if that was tight on that side, then I come over and I can pull the wheel to tighten up that chain. Yep, I'm in fear that we're going to have to get a new nut for the other side because it's stripped and it's just spinning and it ain't going to hold that wheel on. I'll take care of that later on at the bike shop, but for now, I can flip her over, get the chain guard on there, and we'll see where we go from there. Yeah, 
There we Alright, we got the, uh, that was fun. Anyways, I'm going to hook up the uh, cable for the three-speed. I have it in high gear, which is third, which means it's all the way up. I didn't remove this cable at all, so it's in third. All i got to do is make sure that it's pulled through here. Make sure that it goes over the... A little wheel here. We got the little chain that inserts into the back hub. Now I left a little nut where it was. You can see this a little better. I left that little nut where it was. All it should have to do is put this adjusting barrel right back to where it was. Now if life were that easy, we'll find out. It's in third. I'm going to shift it down to first. Let's get it to go. We got first, we got second, and we have third. Brakes are working fine. Check these front brakes. Maybe you can get on a wheel here. The front brakes are grabbing just fine too. Really no need to adjust anything because we already uh, we just pretty much left everything where it was. And there we go. One detailed bike. We'll show it off a little bit in the morning when we got some good sunlight out. And then we'll see you then. Till tomorrow. Well, here we are. It's morning time. We got the, uh, we got the racer all finished up, and uh, we're going to show it off a little bit. Oh, and happy Father's Day to my dad, Bob Alcourt. He, he loves when I pay some recognition to him. Love the guy, you know. He's still with us. Look at that hair. <laughs> Anyways, here's the bike.
another detailed bike and we can put this one into the books and hopefully we'll have a satisfied customer hey thanks for watching see you next time bye